Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All, West Virginia students, sponsored by the West Virginia Associate, Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot hear or see you. This is just one of the different minutes, one of the different uh, sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at wvacrao.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, wvacrao.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining today. I'm super excited to meet with you and go over a little bit more about Fairmont State University. First, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Haley Cochran. I am the Senior Admissions Counselor here at Fairmont State University. And joining with me today is one of my colleagues and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Kayla. I'm an admissions counselor here at Fairmont State. Awesome, thank you, Kayla. So we're super excited that you guys are here today. One minute and I will share my screen for y'all to see. And we'll get started. All right, perfect. Again, like I said, thank you guys so much for joining us today to learn a little bit more about Fairmont State. Maybe you've heard of us before and you just wanna get some more additional information, or maybe today's the first time you've heard about us and you've never visited us before. Um, but I'm excited that you guys are here. I'm gonna be your guide. I'll kind of walk you through the application, admissions and enrollment process. Um, Kayla and I will be happy to answer any questions that you all have today. So whether you're undecided on a college major right now, or maybe you know what you wanna do, there's no need to worry. Like I said, we'll be here to guide you through. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Fairmont State University, we're located in North Central West Virginia. We sit on a charming hilltop campus. Um, we're a small town, small community, but we're growing. We're located to a lot of outdoor um, adventure and places. So whether you like doing outdoor access to biking, hiking, camping, rafting, whatever it may be, we're short anywhere from two to two and a half hour drive, wherever you may want to get. We're also close to large cities such as Columbus, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Washington, DC, that our campus community will actually travel to a lot. So if um, they wanna go any type of world-class arts, shopping, dining, anything like that. Um, any athletics, professional sports that they wanna go see, the location where we're at, you can easily get to all of those. Next with our programs of study, at Fairmont State University, we offer over 50 undergraduate degree programs and over 100 programs of study. So we offer several programs that you can't find anywhere else in the state. Some unique programs to us are national security and intelligence, community health education, community, uh, community health education, like I said, architecture, and FAA Part 141 Flight School. So those are unique programs to Fairmont State that you're not gonna be able to find anywhere else in the state of West Virginia. As you can see, our list is long. There's a wide variety on there. So whether you know, you're into the science, the arts, business, education, we have a little bit of anything and everything for our students. And because of our size, our students get a lot of hands-on experience as soon as they set foot in the classroom. So you know, some other colleges that you may attend, you may have to wait until your junior or senior year to kind of be involved and get, um, you know, get that hands-on experience. But the moment that you set foot on campus at Fairmont State your freshman year, you're gonna be getting that hands-on experience, which is really awesome. Our average class size is about 22 students. So you're not in any big overwhelming classroom setting. It's something a little small, personal, private, a little bit more one-on-one -on -one that you have that connection with your professor. Our teacher-faculty ratio to our students is about a 15 to one. So that just shows how many faculty and staff members that we have on our campus to help the students succeed. So again, like I said, small class sizes, about 22 students in those. And something that's nice is it makes for an easy transition. We know that change from high school to college can be a little bit difficult at times, but that's why we like to keep our class sizes small. So it makes that transition a little bit smoother. Uh, with that, like I said, our faculty are always available to help the students succeed. Not only are they your, your teachers, they're more of a teacher mentor to you. So even when it comes time for graduation, um, they're helping you, you know, look for job opportunities out there. And then you can always reach out back to them. You know, if you ever have any questions, they're, they're there to assist. And we know that when you come to college, it is going to be a little bit difficult. You know, it's a big change. You know, you ha might have a lot more homework or you might be just struggling a little bit more in some of your classes. So something that's unique is that we have a brand new tutoring and testing center. So that's something that's included in your tuition and fees. You don't have to pay any additional money to attend the tutoring and testing center. And we have a lot of options. You can do a scheduled appointment. You can do walk-in if maybe one day between your classes you have some time. You can walk in and meet with the tutor. 
not only do we have student tutors, but we have professional um, faculty and staff tutors as well. And again, like I said, a lot of options with that. Maybe you and some friends want to get together and go do tutoring, you can, or you can do individual. Right now, due to COVID, we are offering face-to-face -face tutoring, or we also have the options for our students if they want to tune in virtually through their computer like we are today, they can tune in virtually and do appointments like that from their residence hall. So again, it's whatever's flexible to the student. Um, you can sign up and go two or three times, or you can go the whole semester. It's really up to you. And also, when you're looking at those programs and study, like I said, we do have a wide variety, but maybe you're kind of up in the air right now. You're maybe undecided and you're still trying to figure out what's going to be the best career path for you. Well, something, again, that's unique to Fairmont State is that we offer what's called academic pathways, and those are for our undecided students. And what academic pathways are, they're just like a couple clusters of different um, majors that you would go into first to kind of help you explore what's out there and see what's going to be the best fit for you. Um, before our students were coming in as undecided, and having a hard time trying to figure that out. And it was taking them a little longer to go through college. You know, maybe it was taking them about five years. We don't really want that to happen. We wanna get you in and out um, and on to maybe a master's program or working in the field within four years. So that's why we created those academic pathways to help you succeed. You'll be paired up with an academic advisor specifically within there, um, within that department who can help you pick a major that's gonna be the best fit for you. So again, like I said, all of our majors are listed here. Hopefully you're able to see them. Um, if not, you can check out our website, fairmontstate.edu slash majors, and all of our majors are listed there as well. Next, we'll talk a little bit about our campus and facilities. This is probably my favorite slide of the day, just because it shows some unique pictures here. This is a picture of our Falcon Center. This is the student recreation building on campus. This is like my favorite spot because this is the hangout spot on campus. This is where everybody gathers between classes or in the evenings. You want to meet up with some friends, maybe grab a bite to eat. Inside this building, you will find the cafeteria located up on the top floor. That's kind of where your main dining options will come um, from. And you have a wide variety there. Also located in the Falcon Center is our brand new Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, and Chalaca. Chalaca is kind of like a Mexican restaurant similar to Chipotle. So again, on top of the dining hall, you also have the three other dining options that are available to you. Also within the Falcon Center, you have the uh, um, basketball courts. So we have two different basketball courts that you can maybe play with some friends between classes or in the evenings. As you can also see there, we have a weight room that's available to students, and then we have a pool, hot tub, and sauna. And again, this is all included in your tuition and fees. You will not use any of that. You will not pay any additional money to use these facilities. So take advantage of that when you're on campus. Get together with some friends in the evenings, hang out, um, and go play some basketball. You know, go go do those things. Also located inside of the Falcon Center, something that's very good to point out is our student health center. And that's definitely something that you want to take advantage of. The Student Health Center is included in your tuition and fees. You don't pay any additional money. So if you're feeling a little bit under the weather, maybe you're far from home and you, don't, you can't jump in the car and go back home to your parents or, you know, your own doctor's office, go to the Student Health Center on campus and they'll be able to assist. Again, if it's something a little bit more serious, they will maybe um, recommend to go off campus to somewhere else, but they are there and able to treat you. So just know that you do have that resource there for you. Touching base a little bit more on our campus life, we have over 50 different clubs and organizations. So when you go to college, I think it's great to get involved. Join a club or join an organization. Um, get active, whether that's something within, you know, maybe um, area of study of majors, and maybe you want to choose a club within your major, you have that opportunity. Or maybe you're into arts or politics, sports, outdoor adventure, a little bit of anything and everything, we offer that. All of our clubs and organizations are listed on our website. And even through COVID-19, they are still staying active any way they can. They're just kind of doing some different things. They might be tuning in virtually to meet with each other, but they're still doing events and they're still meeting um, and getting to be together. Something that's unique is maybe you're looking for a club and we don't offer that club. Well, you and three other friends can actually make your own club, which is really cool because I'm sure more than likely somebody else on the campus is interested in that club too. So you have the opportunity to start up your own club at Fairmont State. Um, we are in the NCAA Division II for athletics, and we have 17 different men's and women's sports. Um, something that's nice is as a, a Fairmont State student, you will get into every athletic event for free. You will never have to pay to go check out a basketball game, volleyball game, whatever it may be. You'll be able to go check that out with your friends. You'll get a little student ID card, and you'll just swipe that at the door, and they'll let you in to check those out. So definitely something that you do want to take advantage of um, just to kind of take back from your studies, relax a little bit, go hang out with some friends and catch a sporting event too. Next, we'll touch base on our residence halls. We have five different residence halls on campus at Fairmont State. 
Three of them are traditional and two of them are suite style. We do have a two year residency requirement. So you will be required to live on campus for your first two years. But something that's nice is we allow you to pick and choose where you want to live. We do not take all of our freshmen and dump them into one residence hall. Um, we let you guys pick and choose what's gonna be the best fit for you. So maybe that's a traditional or maybe that's um, apartment style. Also, I do wanna point out that in every residence hall, there is laundry. Um, so you don't ever have to worry about taking your laundry off campus to a laundry mat or anything like that. That's not gonna happen because every residence hall has a laundry room that's available to you. Every residence hall also does have a little kitchenette so if you ever need to walk down the hallway and heat up some mac and cheese or something late at one night, every residence hall has that, which is very nice as well. Also another perk to our housing is that um, as a student, you are allowed to have your car on campus. So that's something unique and nice. Not every school lets you bring a car as a freshman on campus, but at Fairmont State University, you will be allowed to do that. And it's already included in your tuition and fees. You will not pay any additional money for parking. So that's something very, very nice. You'll get a, a little parking pass and we'll let you know where to put that on your car. And then you'll have a designated parking area that we'll assign you guys to. So with that, we'll go through and touch base on every residence hall here real quickly. First up, we have Morrow Hall. Morrow is considered a traditional residence hall. And a traditional is kind of what reminds you of what you see on TV. You and a roommate sharing a community style bathroom. Traditional residence halls are a great way to meet people because um, they have common areas that you guys can hang out in. As you can see on that bottom right hand side, there's a pool table, kind of just that hangout area where you come out of your room and meet other people from that residence hall. Morrow Hall years ago used to be an all female residence hall. Um, it has now changed since then. Um, something that is also unique to Morrow Hall is that it's since more in the central of campus. So it's very close to all the academic buildings. So if you're looking to get to your classes, maybe you like to sleep until the last minute, Morrow Hall would definitely be a good option because it's located right there in the middle of campus that you can get to everything quickly. Another traditional residence hall is called Pritchard Hall. Um, Pritchard Residence Hall, again, like I said, another traditional, again, a traditional is you and your roommate sharing a community style bathroom. Pritchard Hall is home to our honors students and our international students. You do not have to be an international student or an honors student to live inside of Pritchard Hall, but it is available if you are. Something that's unique about Pritchard Hall is it has a lot of built-in. So as you can see in the upper right-hand corner, that picture there, a lot of your desk and your um, closet space and stuff is built into the wall. So it gives you a lot more extra floor space. Again, Pritchard Hall does have that common area as you can see there. And something that's unique to Pritchard Hall is that it has all those books in there. So you know, you can check, you don't even have to check those out. You can just take a few if you wanna go back to your room and read some, switch them out with some others for people to read. Um, Pritchard Hall is a good gathering spot for everybody to kind of come into. Our last traditional residence hall is called Pence Hall. It sits up on top of the hill, so it has a great view of campus. As you can see, Pence has the largest common area. So again, that's the common area, that hangout spot. It has the largest that you can look over campus and see everything. A lot of our athletes will live in Pence Hall because it actually shares the parking lot with our athletic facility. So a lot of our athletes will check, hang out in Pence Hall as well. Moving on to our most popular residence hall, um, this is Bryant Place. You probably see a lot of pictures of Bryant Place because it has that unique bridge that you walk across to get to. Um, like I said, Bryant Place is considered a suite style. There are single suites and double suites inside of there that you're able to live in. Um, this is the most popular for all student types, whether you're a freshman all the way up into your senior year. Something that's also unique to Bryant Place is that there is some um, classes. Depending on what your major is, you might have a few classes located on the top floor of Bryant. Um, if you're maybe interested in majoring in national security and intelligence, you might have a few of your classes located up there on the top floor too. Again, every residence hall has laundry included already in it. So there is a laundry room inside of Bryant Place too. Um, again, like I said, Bryant Place, largest residence hall, most popular um, for freshmen too. And moving on to our last residence hall, it's called University Terrace. University Terrace is our brand new residence hall. There's several different options and room styles, as you can see there, those are kind of the layouts. As a freshman, you would be able to live in the semi-suite option. Um, there is a quad apartment option, but you're not able to move in that until your sophomore year and up. So that's something that you get to look forward to, to maybe move into that quad apartment your sophomore year and up. But we do allow freshmen to live in that semi-suite. If you are interested in housing, and if you've looked online or seen any pictures, um, housing does fill up kind of quickly. So you definitely want to be on the ball. If you're currently a senior right now, you definitely want to start applying. 
um, so you can get into housing as soon as possible. And later in the um, presentation today, we'll touch base on our admissions requirements and the application process and everything. But just know that if you are interested, it's definitely something that you don't wanna wait for, something you wanna do soon. University Terrace, again, is really popular for our athletes and our upperclassmen, but there are freshmen that still do live inside of University Terrace. It's located um, to the side of our athletic facility, so it's a little, a little bit of a farther walk from the academic buildings, but again, it's not too, too far. Something that's unique to University Terrace is in the bottom of it, in the lobby area, it has a little grab-and-go market, so no other residence hall has that. So maybe if it's late at night one night, you're doing some homework in your room, studying, and you want to grab a, you know, a Gatorade and some chips, you can go down to the grab and go market and get that. That is open 24 hours. And again, like I said, that's unique to that residence hall. No other residence hall has the grab and go market. Continuing on, we'll talk a little bit about um, cost and values and scholarships. So Fairmont State University, not only you know, we have one of the lowest tuition rates in the state, um, but you're gonna have a lot of opportunities for scholarships here. Especially as a West Virginia student, you do have a lot of opportunities. As you can see there in the upper left-hand corner, some of our scholarships are listed. Starting in the month of November, we will have a scholarship application on our website that you guys are able to fill out. So if you're currently a senior um, and you're looking to apply to Fairmont State, starting in the month of November, you definitely wanna be on the lookout for that scholarship application to go live. Um, hopefully November 1st, that'll be on there and you guys can fill that out. It'll get submitted to the financial aid office and any additional scholarships that we do have available for you, um, they would review that and then they would let you know if you would be eligible for any of those. With that, um, we also offer what's called an opportunity scholarship. This is for our West Virginia students for any additional funding to uh, assist with your tuition and fees. It can be a renewable scholarship that's available anywhere from $500 to $2,500. That's something that you can earn that's based off your GPA and test score. So that's a scholarship that's available for West Virginia students too. We also do offer an alumni legacy scholarship. So maybe your parent or your guardian attended Fairmont State University and graduated from Fairmont State. We do have a scholarship that you could apply for. Again, that's the alumni legacy scholarship if your parents had attended. And then we also have um, a presidential scholarship. This is our premier academic scholarship. It's for West Virginia residents. Um, it includes your tuition and fees, room and board, and a book stipend as well. Again, that's based off your GPA and test score. That'll go live in the month of November as well, too. And all of those requirements are listed on our website. So again, you can visit fairmontstate.edu slash scholarships, and it'll break it down for you to see what the requirements for all of those scholarships are. Tuition and fees, here's a little snapshot real quick of what our estimated tuition and fee cost for the year is. Again, this is an estimated cost. This is before any scholarships or financial aid is put towards that cost. About 85% of our students receive some type of financial aid. So again, like I said, there's a lot of scholarship opportunities to bring that cost down and make it very affordable. Continuing on, we'll touch base on the admissions processing requirements. So if you're liking what you're seeing today and hearing, you know, applying to Fairmont State University is super easy to do. Um, the full list is on our website of the requirements, but I'll touch base on all of them if you just visit fairmontstate.edu slash apply. Um, that's where you'll be able to find our application act. Our application is active and we're taking applicants every day. So you can go online and submit that through. It's free to apply. That's something that's very nice that you do not have to pay an application fee. If you are a high school senior, some documents that you would need to submit is your official high school transcript. You can submit that through an electronic service such as parchment.com, or you can contact your school's guidance counselor's office and have them submit that over as well too, kind of whatever's best for the school. So again, an official high school transcript, we look that you have at least a 2.0 high school GPA throughout your whole four years. Due to COVID-19, we have waived the ACT and SAT test requirement for first-time freshmen entering for the fall of 2021. Now, we do encourage students to please still take the ACT and SAT if you have availability too. So if they're offering it anywhere in a location near you, please sign up and take it because of scholarship purposes. Again, we have waived the test requirement for first-time freshmen due to COVID-19, but please, if you still are able to take the test, we still strongly encourage that you do take an ACT or SAT for scholarship purposes. It does not matter which one you take. You can take both. You could take ACT or SAT. It's whatever that you feel you do best in. We will take either. And just a side note that we do not super score. We will just take your highest score, whether that's from the SAT or the ACT. 
Another document that you would need to, sub to submit for your admissions file is your proof of immunization, that is your MMR shot records from your doctor's office. Um, that's nothing that's going to withhold you from getting into the institution, just another document that you would need to submit. If you've ever taken any AP classes, we will accept that credit as long as you score a three or higher on your AP test. So again, if you've ever done any of that, if that does not show on your high school transcript, you'll just need to go to your collegeboard.org and submit those scores over to us so we can have those on file. And then maybe if you've ever done any type of dual enrollment or early college through a community college closer to home, you will definitely wanna submit those transcripts as well. You'll just need to contact whatever institution that you attended um, and get those transcripts submitted to us so we can count that college credit as well. And again, like I said, all of that is listed on our website. Um, the minute you apply to Fairmont State University, you'll be connected with um, an admissions counselor from your area who will kind of help walk you through that application process and letting you know what documents are going to need to be submitted. Next, um, something that's coming up really soon here is our Maroon and White Week. This is our virtual open house. So, you know, in the past, we've always hosted this on a Saturday event where we invite everybody to campus, but due to COVID, um, we are going to be taking it online and we have decided to spread it out for a week long. Um, so we're going to have a lot of different sessions that are available for students to attend and it's definitely something I strongly encourage. Today, we're just kind of touching base on a little bit about Fairmont State, but if you really want to dive deep in and see more about programs and maybe more about student life, we're going to have all of these sessions. Again, they're kicking off. We're going to have an opening ceremony on um, Sunday, November 8th in the evening. We'll have that kickoff. And then all week long, starting at 9 a.m. until about 6 at night, um, we will be having different sessions. So we'll be having sessions on academic programs, again, sessions on housing, financial aid. We're going to have an application session, so maybe you need help filling out that application. Um, we're going to have a session all about that. We're going to have a scholarship search um, session that you can attend. So definitely, if you're interested in some more scholarships, you might want to check out that one. Again, we have a long list, and you can pick and choose what sessions you want to attend. They're about 50-minute long sessions, so you make your schedule how you want it to be. If you just go to fairmontstate.edu slash visit is where you'll be able to find the sign up. It's quick and easy to do. And like I said, it's going to be a super beneficial week. Um, definitely, if you're a senior right now in high school, it's something that you will want to attend. And even if you're a junior, it's a great way to start exploring your options out there. So. I definitely encourage, I really hope everybody signs up for at least a few sessions to kind of dive a little bit deeper in. Some upcoming dates and times. Again, like I said, we do have that Maroon and White Week, which we already just touched base on. But every Tuesday evening at five o'clock, we do offer a Discover Fairmont State University information session. So just keep that on your mind. Every Tuesday at five o'clock, we will offer that. Um, we do have live chats assistance available. So if you're ever on our website and you just have a quick question, you can chat with us on our website with an actual admissions counselor between the hours of the eight and four on Monday through Friday. Um, be on the lookout, keep following us on our website because we are gonna be start offering campus tours here very, very soon. So we're super excited to be able to allow students to start coming to campus. So again, just check, out, check us out on social media. We're active on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you, like I said, visit our website, we're gonna be um, having some more information about that that those should be opening up very soon. In the meantime, we do offer a virtual tour that you guys can check out. It's a short little eight minute video that shows you really the ins and outs of our campus. Moving on over, here's some contact information for us. So if there's anything that you guys might have questions on, please feel free to contact us. We have our email right there, recruit at fairmontstate.edu. You send that in and we'll get you in contact with an admissions counselor specifically from your area who can help answer any questions that you have. And of course, our number is listed there. Um, or again, just visit our website, fairmontstate.edu slash admit, and we'll be happy to assist you guys with any questions that you might have. So I'll go ahead and stop um, sharing my screen for the moment and we'll see if we have any questions that came in that we can answer for you guys. Okay, Kayla, do we have any questions come in the chat? Or if anybody has any questions, please type them in the chat and Kayla can read them off. We don't have any questions so far. Is there anything maybe today that I didn't touch base on that anybody might have some questions about that I can answer or maybe about any programs? We do have a question. Do we have an honors psychology program? 
Awesome. So we do have a psychology program. Um, the psychology program and the honors program are two different things. So you can major in psychology if you'd want to. Um, our honors application is going live on our website here soon that you guys can apply for the honors college um, as long as you meet GPA and test score requirements. That's something that we on the lookout for, but that's definitely a major that we do offer. A lot of our students will do psychology and sociology together actually because they do go hand in hand and it's definitely easy to be a double major in four years. So definitely an opportunity that you would have here. Okay, and another question we have is what should I study for occupational therapy? Okay, definitely something you're interested in. Um, I would suggest tuning into that Maroon and White Week. Um, if you're looking into that, something along the exercise science route would be a great, um, a great path for you to follow. Our um, exercise science falls under the School of Education, Health, and Human Performance, and their day is going to be on that first Monday of that week. So um, that first week, that week of November 8th through the 14th on that Monday is going to be a little bit more in depth of those majors that you could study. Okay, and one more. Um, do you have a business major? Business major, yes. We definitely offer um, a major in business. So business, there's a couple of different things. You could do just business administration, or maybe you want to do an emphasis in management, marketing, finance, economics, um, accounting, whatever you want to do. You can also minor in business. So you definitely have a lot of opportunities when it comes to our school of business. We also offer a master's in business, an MBA program that you can definitely have availability to. So business is a great degree. You can do a lot of things with a business degree. So definitely something that we have and a lot of opportunity with that one. The next question is, would Fairmont be a good school for becoming a special education teacher? I say 100% yes. Um, so years ago, Fairmont State University was founded as an all women's teaching school. So we were founded as a teaching school and we really built off of that. We have a very strong teacher education program. Something that's very nice with our uh, teacher education program is that hands-on aspect. As soon as you set foot your freshman year, you're gonna start doing early observation hours. Um, and what that means is you will be placed in a local middle school or high school, whatever one that you're going into, whether that be elementary education or secondary education, we will place you in a local school so you get that early field experience. You will go in and you will um, observe the classroom. You'll have a host teacher and they'll kind of be your guide. So you have to do so many hours of that before you can continue on. So again, the teacher education program really gets you into the classroom soon. Um, you know, some programs, you don't even get into the classroom until your senior year when you do student teaching, but that's not gonna happen at Fairmont State. We're gonna put you in early so we can get a feel if that's something you, you like. So definitely a good route to come. Again, like I said, for more about the education program during Miller and White Week, they're that Monday. So they're gonna be going all over the different majors. So awesome. Um, the next question we have is how good are the nursing programs? Nursing program? Yes, that's another great program. So nursing is actually one of our top five programs at Fairmont State, for sure. The nursing program is definitely a competitive and a selective program, too. So if you're interested in the nursing program, it's something that you definitely want to check on our website and make sure that you can check all those boxes off on there that you meet all of those requirements as well. Um, a lot of, of course, hands on our nursing students have a great success rate afterwards. So again, um, the School of Nursing will be having their information session on the Friday of Marina White Week. Um, and it's going to be a very cool interactive session that I think that you guys should definitely tune into. We'll be given a tour of our nursing simulation lab that we have on campus, which is really unique that you would definitely not want to miss out on. The next question is, are there internships for nursing? For nursing? So with the inter we do have different internship opportunities for a lot of our students out there. That's something that they work through with their professor. Um, with nursing, you're, get you're getting in the hospital early. So you're doing your clinicals. That so that's something that you would be doing through the program is your clinicals at a local hospital. And they'll place you. That's um, It depends on where you're from, where the area. You would either be placed maybe in Bridgeport, West Virginia, at UHC, or at one of the hospitals in Morgantown, West Virginia. Again, that's something that's worked out through with the um, dean of the department. And I think that's all the questions for right now. Questions for right now? Awesome. Those are great questions. Please, you can keep them coming. Are there any questions that you guys have? Anything else? Again, like I said, just be on the lookout. We will have our campus tours opening soon, so definitely something if you guys want to join and come visit campus and see us, we would love for you guys to come visit and see 
definitely um, be on the lookout for those. Sign up for our campus tour. We would love to have you guys come visit. Again, if you have any questions, please contact us at recruit at fairmontstate.edu or our phone number is 304-367-4855. And we'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. I thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really glad you took the time out of your evening to join in and learn a little bit more about Fairmont State University. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's session and I hope to see you at Marina Light Week. All right, big thanks to Haley and Kayla for joining us with Fairmont State University. Um, please take advantage of all of the um, uh, notes that have, that have been given to you from Haley and Kayla. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, whenever you do close this window, there is going to be a quick link to a four, a four question survey. Any feedback that you can provide would be appreciated. Um, again, this is just one of the many sessions being hosted. So please be sure to sign up for any more additional sessions at wvacrao.org. And again, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording. So if you wanna follow up with anything that you watched today, um, that will be, be available at wvacrao.org as well. Thank you and have a good evening.